Well, hello and welcome to this month's master class video lesson. I'm excited because we're doing something a little bit different. Since I'm on vacation, I was uh, lucky enough to get, uh, I guess I kind of maybe pushed my way a little bit. <laughs> I apologize, but I'm always so excited when I get uh, to interview interesting people doing interesting things. So this is Kyle, yep. uh, a new friend of mine. Actually, he happened to stay with my mom for quite a while. So yeah. he has an interesting job and I'll let him introduce himself and then we can learn more about what he does. My name's Kyle and uh, just moved here to Bend from Boulder, Colorado yep. about uh, eight months ago and just found this job on Craigslist, which it was really easy. Uh, came for an interview, met the guy, saw the two shops and I was like, all right, let's give this a try and mm -hmm. see how it goes. Yeah. Um, and it's worked out really well. Um, so I, you know, from the beginning, it, the whole allure for me was all the different things that I could learn because sure. um, there's just so many trades uh, that go into working on a trailer. Yep. It's kind of like working on a house. You have plumbing, electrical, insulation, you know. Yeah, like, it's like a mini house. Yeah, exactly. So everything that you have to do with on a house, you do on a trailer. And um, I've since, you know, beginning gotten more specialized in just doing cabinetry, uh, um, building them, installing them, um, everything, especially with the airstreams, they're circular. And so it's really difficult. You got to do a lot of scribing. Um, what's uh, that? What's scribing? Scribing is like where you start with a rough piece mm -hmm. of material and then you start getting it kind of closer to the actual curvature. Of oh, the wall. okay. Huh. Um, cause you can't, because it's, there's so many curved edges on an, on an Airstream trailer. Yeah, exactly. Ah, okay. Yep. So you want to get it as tight of a close fit to the actual curvature as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And we call that scribing. Huh. Um, and that's something you didn't know before you started either. Right. Yeah. Yep. That was something I learned just on the job. Um, and we've developed some different techniques that work for different situations. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's a really fun part of it, but have you been instrumental in that at all? Like developing any, any new kind of yeah. techniques or anything? Yep. A little bit. Yeah. Um, when we first started, we would use a system that, um, used hot glue guns oh, and, huh. and like sticks that kind of give you points of reference. But since then, uh, we've found some, um, oh, other products that, are more specific for that, that actually bend to the curvature oh, and you can tighten that's them down. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. So it makes a job a lot easier and faster. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just every day it's something new. It's um, always changing. You never really know what kind of um, headaches you're going to hit, what, what's going to be <laughs> most difficult. You sure. Know? You, what, what's, what's the latest headache or snag that you've encountered? So right now I'm working on the doors. Um, we have these pocket sliding doors. Oh, and that's the, on the inside of the trailer or the outside of it? On the inside of the oh, trailer. Oh, really? Huh. Yep. So between the bedroom and bathroom, we have one sliding door. And that one went in perfect. It was pretty, pretty much easy, no headache. But now the one between the bathroom and the kitchen is proving to be a lot more difficult. Oh, really? Um, the one wall is kind of bowing, so it's oh. not staying straight like huh. we wanted it to. Sure. So when you have a sliding door, that creates uh, uh, friction and scratches the door, and you really got to uh. try and engineer around that. Um, do, you, do you buff it down or sand it or something? Right. Or? Yeah, it's kind of – right now I'm, I'm doing a combination of um, uh, giving the – the door more space from the trim, but also um, sanding down the trim so that it can accommodate the space that we want. So. Huh. Well, you sound like a professional already. <laughs> You've only been here a few months, right? Right. Working yeah. on this. Yep. And before this, you were you were working as a, like a landscaper, like kind of doing maintenance, things like yep. that. Yeah, I did. I did facilities management for University of Colorado, mm -hmm. um, but none of, none of the level of woodworking that we're doing here uh -huh. or even plumbing. I mean, we did some irrigation, sure. um, but just completely different. Uh, There's a caliber. whole ball game, like whole new, whole new ball of wax or whatever yep. for this, I imagine. Yeah. So this yeah, is, exactly. uh, this is the woodshed or the, well, I guess can't call it a shed, but like the wood shop. Yeah. This uh, is where all the, the woodworking's done. we got the table saw over here, yep. chop saw, uh, drill press. Um, yeah. And then, uh, he's, uh, we also have this trailer in here that we're getting ready to paint. Mm -hmm. Um, the um, 
there's different jobs that come up um, that he takes bids on. And um, so sometimes they're just small jobs that are in one weekend and out the next weekend. And, oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Yep. So quick turnover, but then there's other jobs like the Airstreams. Um, sure. That just take months and months. Oh, really? Yep. This one that we're working on now, it's been at least um, 13 months that we've had it. Oh. Yep. Huh. Yeah, so we'll we'll go in and, and take a look at that in a minute. But I figured it's nice. Uh, like I used to work construction. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Like I was uh, working as a contractor as an oh, apprentice, cool. so I, I miss like the smell of wood and yep. sawdust and all that. And I've yep. like still you know burned my hands and uh-huh. done a couple of things. You been injured so far doing anything or? Well, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, I haven't had any serious injuries. Uh, there was one time. That I was clearing um, some like debris away from the the blade of a bandsaw. Oh, really? And just did it too quick, and it got just the tip of my finger, and that was pretty early on, and it just made me realize, yep, got to really slow down, yep, take yep. your time. Um, it's easy to to feel rushed, but around this type of machinery, you don't want to don't want to push yourself. Or sure, do anything risky. Well, your boss sounds like a nice guy. And yeah. Now he's like, let's make sure we get the job done correctly kind of person. Or? Yep. Very oh, okay. much. Yeah. Lots of times, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll do the quality analysis um, and be like, yeah, it's just not up to, to par. It's not up to snuff. We got to send it back. Let's redo it. Um, so there's a lot of that, which is always a little heartbreaking. You, sure. You install something and yep. you're like, nope, rip it out, redo it. <laughs> but you like, feel good uh, when you do a good job. Yeah, exactly. Once sure. it's once it's done right, you're like, yeah, all right, yeah. solid. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's great. What What other things that you looked into? So since you're just moving here and you didn't have like yeah. any, any leads on jobs or anything, and you applied to this and other things as right. well. Right. Yeah. There was another cabinetry job. Oh, um, so you were you were you were like thinking about doing some kind of woodworking, or you I wanted was. to get in that field? Yeah. I mean, initially when my wife and I moved to Bend, we had this idea of buying a house that we would renovate, mm. so kind of flip, um, gut, and and redo. Mm. But the market just didn't didn't um provide us that opportunity oh um, really huh. like what you were paying for a house that you have to flip is essentially what you could get a house that's already in fairly good condition uh, so it didn't it felt like more risk than sure. it really hmm. was worth so this was a good um second best you know getting all the same um experience but in general yeah i just knew i wanted to do something more um, construction related, woodworking, hands on, um, kind hands on. Of. Yeah. Sure. Something more applicable and, um, just practical for the rest of my life to have skills and knowledge that will stick with me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I remember like the same thing, uh, you know, working as the contractor's apprentice and getting to go into people's houses and do stuff. I, I didn't really know anything about it. I mean, I just right. like trying to build things and paint and do yep. stuff like that. Uh, but I, yeah, I can imagine you get out here and you, I mean, you must be enjoying yourself. You look happy. And, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I am. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's, uh, it's very much just kind of a, a an apprenticeship and a learning opportunity. It's like, I know friends who go back to school for a certain trade or whatever. Uh, I'm sure, like, sure. Kind of comparing it to that. Mm-hmm. It's just schooling for me. How have you found that? You've talked to other friends of yours who've gone back to maybe some kind of trade school and you, you think this is preferable, for at least for your yeah. situation? I would say for my situation, yeah, it's preferable. Um, tuition rates are really high. Ah, sure. Well, you get paid on the job, you know. Yeah, exactly. So don't make a lot of money, but uh, make enough to, to where, you know, it's it's probably as good as getting a grad stipend. <laughs> ah, sure, sure. Yep. I suppose if you didn't have a house, you could sleep in the woodshed, you know, right. like get, 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 get a place in the garage or something. Yeah, or get my own trailer to, to ah, fix up. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah, I guess you could You could bring over if you need to maybe build something. Does he let you use the tools if you need to make something? Or? Yeah, yep. He, he'll let me stay after hours and um, build things for myself and, and for the house. Sure. Yeah. Have you so, made anything yet? Uh-uh, not yet. Haven't haven't needed to use the table saw or anything. Ah. I got um, basically all the other equipment at my house. Oh, than, so you have your own, you have like a like a garage or something, you got a space to work? Yep. Yeah, yep. I got a garage. I haven't built it um, to be a good woodworking space yet. Um, there's still a bunch of recreational gear and whatnot in there, ah. but um, I at least have all, all the equipment equipment that I need, um, and machinery to, uh, to do a lot of the woodworking that I want to do. Huh. 
Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all fascinating to me, especially now because everything I do is digital. Yeah, I and know. So I miss, yeah. like, I, I don't even have uh, personal students that I teach anymore. So everybody, yeah. you watching out there, this is how I get to connect uh, with all of my students. But it's, it's really fun to just come and, I mean, even just to volunteer to try to help out to do some kind of building project yeah. or landscaping, uh, yeah. that kind of thing. Have you had, a, like, a favorite part of the job like the woodworking specifically or or maybe like electrical or plumbing or something yeah that's a good question i mean woodworking i definitely enjoy the most yeah. it's um it's the most fun but i guess you know the finishing work so oh sure i mean you want to explain a little bit more about that like yeah, the different like the stages of that right so well that's a good point yeah the stages um if you really want to start from the beginning uh, clients find a really old trailer mm -hmm. and they ship it to us. Um, lots of times they'll work with an architect firm that uh, they draw up plans and designs and they ship those to us as well. But once we get the trailer, we just start in the demo, the demolition phase of ripping everything out, uh, getting it down to just its skin and bones, and then um, re start start from scratch. So we'll we'll do the electrical and the plumbing and mm -hmm. the insulation and then put the skins inside skins back up then we do all the cabinetry the f well the flooring and then the cabinetry then we install lights and appliances wow um but then the finish work so th that's what i was getting at is um really just everything cosmetic that um you can see with the naked eye and just really honing in on those details mm -hmm. um the you know, the nitty gritty of, um, oh, there's a speck of sawdust over here. Uh -huh. or there's a smudge on this wall. Uh -huh. or, you know, so it's tedious, but it like just makes everything pop at the end and just yep. makes it look show yep. worthy, you know, showroom quality. And your, your boss has a good reputation or the company or whatever. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, his wife actually, um, started the vintage trailer association of Oregon. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a good, if you can start a trade organization, you must be doing pretty well. Yeah. And I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, put it in, in there for the uh, vintage trailer masters. That's the, sure. Uh, so that, that's, yeah, that's an, that if you, if for. you out there have a, uh, a vintage trailer or, I mean, but you guys are pretty, pretty focused on Airstream trailers. We're pretty focused. Yeah. I mean, there's just a, there's a, enough demand in the market um that we have and we have like three sitting outside just waiting to i know be yeah it's it it actually it's amazing to look especially yeah. the difference uh yeah well, maybe we could try to shoot that too i want to make sure we can get some good mm -hmm. uh audio on that as well but so this yep. one behind us is not an airstream it's not an airstream it's a it's a vintage it's um i, I don't think it's quite a shasta um but it's the same period same type mm -hmm. of a trailer yep and so have you have you thought about uh or i guess Maybe the better question is, if, do you know enough that if you could, like, build your own trailer from the beginning, like, maybe if you got some yeah. parts, if you, like, you know how to do the electrical wiring and... Right. Yeah. I mean, at this point, before I started the job, I wouldn't have said that I'd be able to do that, but at this point, I would feel comfortable oh, getting really? something old and uh, and doing the renovations on it myself. Huh. It would definitely take more time than what we can accomplish here. Sure. Um, and the man hours, but, Yeah. Could you fix a car? Do you know anything about automobiles no. or? No, I don't know anything about engines. Don't know anything about um, cars, really. Hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, the trailers, they don't have engines. And... Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice, I mean, I guess you just need to, well, how, how does it work for the electricity? When you, you power it, you connect it to the car yeah. battery or something? Or does it have you, there's like a, like right. a at the camping Yeah, so or something? most of them are, are designed to, to connect to the grid. So like an RV park will have water and electric sources oh, okay. um, for you to plug into. So that's mainly what we design them for, but they always have um, deep marine um, uh, batteries. So, like, um, you could probably run the electricity. As far as the uh, the lights, you could run those for, I don't know, like two days probably. Oh, really? But the the refrigerator definitely eats up a lot. Uh. The uh, AC, air conditioner, heater eats up a lot of electricity. So that would drain your batteries very quickly. Hmm. But if you weren't using those... Um, then you could go a long time just relying on the battery. Some some um, refrigerators will actually be propane too, so oh. you can get get oh, them to run off of propane. 
So mm-hmm. you would you would have a and they the the client just tells you what style they like or maybe yep. they want to convert one to the other or something like that. Yeah. Yep. They'll um, usually specify what they want, but also sometimes you can have both options and just have a power converter um, oh. and switch between which one you want. All three of those options. Really. Battery, pa- um, propane, and just plug in. Huh. Yeah. Now, do you have your own trailer at all? Do you any, I don't, yeah. no. Like, I, does this made you want one more? You want to get a, get a trailer? Or? Yeah, I definitely want to get a trailer. Before, when we were in Boulder, we had a camper van. Oh, you did? And I liked having a camper van, except that anytime you wanted to use it, you had to drive it. So uh. the, the thing about having a trailer is like, I can drive it up, drop it somewhere, mm-hmm. drive off, you know, do the thing in town go back to the campsite and the camper's still there sure with a camper van you can't save a spot because uh, you're always yep, yep, yep. It's wherever connected you go to the, to the car and, yep. uh, i see so it's yeah it, it's made me uh want to want to get a trailer yeah really. yep. and, and your wife what does she think about that is she is she she's in you? yeah she yeah she likes she's it game uh the only yep. thing is right now we both have just four cylinder cars so we can't i mean you could pull like a teardrop camper but nothing uh Nothing big, sure. really. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I'd love to, like, we're, we're going to have to transport over to the other, you think James will let us in there? Yeah. And we can, we can look around. Yep. All right. Well, I want to give you a bit more of a kind of an inside look at see how this is. So we will switch it off and we'll be back in just a moment. Yeah. See you then. All right. So we are back here inside and we are actually going to take a, a bit more of a tour over here. So this is the, the big Airstream that they're working on. You want to tell me a bit more about this? We could kind of... Take sure. a tour through here. Yeah, so this Airstream, um, we got, like I said, about 13 months ago. Uh-huh. Um, we've redone a lot of the windows. Any window that you see installed, we completely removed um, and then uh, re- cleaned it and uh, put it back together. Huh. Polishing, this is, you can see it's obviously getting polished. Um, yeah, it looks really nice. nice. And shiny. This is probably our seventh, eighth time. Um, polishing the entire trailer mm-hmm. so it takes a long, lot of time it's kind of like sandpaper and um, wood in the sense that you got to start aggressive and then you you get lighter and lighter until you know your last sanding job or polishing job is sure. just really light but these are the cabinets you can see they're um, still gil- getting built um, it's definitely a step or a, yeah it's always a, a process here you can see the kind of curvature that you have to get um, when you're trying to get it as exact as possible. Um, these corners are just, that's the what you call scribing. It's ah, okay. really getting it into there. Um, so what tool do you use to get these corners in this edge? What are you using on that? Um, it's a bandsaw, table saw combination. Oh, okay. Yep. And then um, there's the ducting that goes through. We have the furnace over there. And the power center. Oh, so that's this down here? Yep. So that's the hot water heater and the um, furnace. Oh, okay. So when you plug in at a at a campground or whatever, then like that's actually powering your water or yep. kind of heating your water, I should say. Yeah, exactly. And then these are, uh, we built all these walls. And again, you're scribing to the, um, the curvature of it. This is where this, the sink and stove top will be. This will be the bathroom. Um, they'll have a shower, rainfall shower right there, and then a toilet right here. Huh. Um, this foam's going to come out, but it's a, um, a drop-down shower pan so that the whole bathroom will drain down to one source. And then here's the bedroom. Um, they'll have two side tables and a queen-size bed that pops up, and you can have storage underneath. Will it flip up like a Murphy bed or something, or it's just going to be like Not quite like, like a Murphy, level? kind of like on a pickup truck, you know, the, when they have uh, the flat topper on the back, it kind of just raises up maybe three or four feet. And, uh, yeah, but this is the one sliding door that worked perfect. It wasn't a, a problem at all. Oh, very cool. Yeah. But this other one there, that one's giving us a little more of a headache. And so is this is this going to be kind of a hallway here? Like you walk through this and the bathroom, like yep. the toilet is here and the shower, and so it's kind of a... Yeah, it'll just be a, a walk through. I think it's just how the client wanted to uh, have some protection or privacy for their own bedroom sure. in the back. 
um, because this area up front will be able to sleep four other people. Wow. Um, so I think they're going to want their, their space to get away to. So after you guys finish all this, like this is kind of the the second layer of, you know, the, the, the wood and all that. Uh -huh. Do you also do the upholstery here or do you outsource that as well? Uh, the upholstery we outsource. The cushions oh, okay. themselves um, and the, the coverings that they get is, is outsourced. Um, but we do everything up and up until that point and even all of this that you see it's going to get sanded filled um, and painted so this is all paint grade cabinet uh, material huh and then all the countertops actually are going to be a diff I think they're going to be Corian a uh, different type of material oh okay yeah so no marble in here or any like uh... yeah that... is there is there certain um I guess maybe for uh, like Airstream styled, is there is there like a typical maybe of a certain color schemes or something like that that people right. get that's traditional? Or... Yeah, I think the vintage trailers themselves have a, a specific um, kind of color scheme or style style to them that's a little more specific, but not not this Airstream. This is you know for a client who's paying top dollar and uh, they get it how they want it. So huh. yeah. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. We can show you over here is our screen and window department where we do all the window renovations. It's so shiny. Yeah. Yeah, the actual polishing job is, when it's done is, is nice. But these are kind of some of the older windows, the frames. We, we got them all the way down to, to that and then... Oh, really? So you have to take yep. these and clean them and buff them and whatever and then put yeah. them... So what, what are you using for windows? Do you get new windows? Or you we do. Oftentimes we get or... new glass. Um, if, if it comes with glass, we'll try to reuse it. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's too old or it's broken. Um, and so we just pay to, to get new glass. These were all tinted, so we took them in and had them professionally tinted. Wow. Um, yep. And we'll be installing those later. But here's another buffing area where we do a lot of the, the buffing. Oh, so you take these pieces of metal or whatever yep. and run them through this? Run them on this machine right here that spins really fast and you've got to hold on tight. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I guess you got... What, what's the most uh, dangerous tool that you work with, you think? Ah, oh, that's tough. Probably a grinder. Oh, um, really? A handheld disc grinder that sure. cuts metal. Oh, really? And uh, sometimes you're in a tight spot that you really don't want to lose any kind of control or else it could really uh, eat your lunch. Wow. Yep. Yeah, look at all this stuff. This is great. So what? what is like, uh, let's say I wanted to come in here and uh, and redo my own trailer. What is that What is that going to run me to do something like this? Do you know anything about Ooh. the pricing for this stuff? Or are yeah. you learning about that? Um, you know, it, it can range anywhere from um, $60,000 to $160,000. Wow. Yeah. it's a, It just really depends on how much work you, you need it to go into it and huh. what kind of finished product you're looking for. Yeah, it looks beautiful. And the components. I mean, you know, this uh, one's got two, sure, sure. two, I don't know, those are probably $1,200 air conditions. Um, oh, the ones up on the top there? Yeah. Yep. Huh. And so you also said you, you raised this one six inches, this kind of like uh, bottom yeah, bottom section so here. This is hidden. It's um, actually over here you can get a better look at it. But here is where the old body stopped and then this is the old well we replaced the subfloor but this is the c channel of aluminum hmm. that we added uh, so that the body could sit down six inches higher than it used to huh yeah so that's definitely a specialty i think we were the only second shop that's ever done that wow yeah well, you guys are pioneering some, some new techniques then. Uh-huh. Very yep. cool. And we can take a look at the ones outside, too, before we uh, yeah, sure. let them go. Those are kind of in a different level of uh, the phase, you know. They're, they're going through the demolition. But this one here, you can see we got all the windows out. Um, all the inside skins have been ripped out, and all the old insulation's been ripped out. That's going to get new spray foam insulation, and we'll put the skins back up and clean and paint those. And then when the windows are done, we'll reinstall those, and you can 
kind of see see how it progresses. Yeah, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. And then one thing we built before the summer came were these um, oh these apparatuses to um, be able to support the weight of lifting the body up off of the trailer chassis. Sure, sure. And that's how we did this one. We replaced the subfloor by getting the whole body up off and then um, cool. redid that trailer chassis. Yeah, this is just amazing, amazing stuff over here. And yeah. so this is, a, this is also an Airstream, but a smaller version. Yeah, this one is just a, a cute little like 15 foot. Then there's, I think this one's like a 20 foot and that one's, I don't know, 25. The one inside I think is 30. So they make all sizes. Huh. Oh, the door's open if you want to peek in. Oh yeah, yeah, let's take a look. This one we just got, so it's definitely getting uh, still in the demolition phase. Oh yeah, you can see all the old uh, insulation in here. Uh huh. Yep. So do these things get hot, or does the because it's so shiny it reflects the sun? Right. Um, yeah, I think it would get hot if it wasn't insulated, uh, as you can feel in there. You know, it's, it's pretty, pretty warm. It's pretty warm. <laughs> yep. And it's hot out in Bend. I guess it's, uh, it, it's, yeah. it's baking out here in the summertime. Yep. Very cool. Well, why don't we, uh, let's head back into the, the original okay. spot or we could either, either one of these. Yeah. Head down there. But this is great. I mean, uh, you feel pretty lucky that you, you found this job and. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Had something cool. Yep. It's a really fun, uh, fun job. Definitely learning stuff new every day and, uh, getting good experience. Yep. So you think you'll uh, maybe take this and maybe open up your own business with it and somehow do something interesting like that? Right. Or? Yeah, I don't know exactly yet. I'm still trying to work out the uh, the kinks of what my next step would be. Huh. Um, but it does feel like a good step in the right direction. Sure. Yep. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I love the shot. i got the uh, basketball court in uh -huh. here, too. <laughs> anyway, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but... Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much for, for letting us come in and, and see what what you get to do over here. It looks like fascinating work. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. I'm glad yeah, you guys yeah. could come. All right. Well, anyway, we will come back uh, in just a moment for the special mission homework assignment for this month, and we will say bye-bye to Kyle. Yep. Bye-bye. Well, that's it for this month's lesson set. I hope you have enjoyed it. Did you enjoy seeing the inside of those trailers and just really getting a nice, more interesting background than what I have right here? Again, it's typical for uh, really to have kind of a recording studio and having maybe some kind of interesting background. Unfortunately, I don't, but hopefully this keeps the focus on the words that you're reading and my mouth and other things like that. So even if you don't enjoy the background very much, I hope you are enjoying my, my beautiful face. Uh, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this lesson set and it really was a lot of fun for me to get out and shoot this one, especially since we can walk around and do more things like that. Uh, if you would like to see more things where we're going out and shooting more physical things and you see what they look like, do send us a mail and let us know. We love getting feedback from learners and especially other things, other topics you'd like to learn more about. So really you decide what happens in these lessons. We want to make things that help you improve. And so if you're interested in learning more about whatever, some particular kind of thing, and typically we like to make things that are helpful for everyone. So lots of people are maybe interested in learning how to build something or to create something. And so these kinds of things uh, even if you don't physically repair trailers or something, a lot of the phrasal verbs in the vocabulary is applicable. You can apply that to other things as well. So I do hope you uh, go out and use these. And then again, send us an email at info at englishanyone.com. If you'd like to learn more about other things, just tell us what you'd like to know more about, and we can make more lessons about those things. Well, your mission for this month what I would like you to do, actually, I want to give you two different things. The first one is that practice hack that I shared with you in the Fluency Corner lesson. So what I'd like you to do this month is really practice mirroring what other people are saying. And you don't have to do that for everything that they say. You don't have to repeat everything in exactly the same way they do it because that can get annoying. But what you should do is, especially when... 
They're saying something like if they ask you a question like, what did you do today? You can even like kind of ask yourself that question yourself. You can say, oh, what did I do today? Oh, I went to something like that. And this is a perfect way of kind of sneakily, sneakily, trickily kind of, kind of uh, finding a way to practice your words. Again, in that conversation where you're taking something that a native speaker says or somebody else and you're repeating it back to them. Even if you don't directly say that same thing back to them, there are really lots of great ways to do this. But again, just look for ways where you can repeat something back, like if they ask you a question or if they say something and you say, oh, I also like, you know, playing like D. Do you like playing baseball? I say, yeah, I like playing baseball, instead of just saying something like yes. So again, you might be able to just answer that and a native speaker would just say yes, but your job is to improve your speaking and you use all these small opportunities to do that and that's what's going to help you become a faster speaker of uh, more fluent English. Anyway, so that's job one. The second one is more related to this topic specifically, and that is I'd like you to find some kind of project you can build. And if you're around native speakers, hopefully you can find something, maybe a class you can take. It doesn't really matter what that happens to be, uh, but it could be, you know, like even if I'm living in Japan, I could do Ikebana, which is like flower arranging or, or anything else where I'm doing some kind of physical thing. Again, not just talking. I want you to do it's kind of like going on a first date with someone. I don't recommend people just go to a movie or just have dinner. You should do something physical where you can walk around and uh, it's a bit more relaxed and easier for people to speak. So if you're just sitting across from each other at a table, it can be a bit more, maybe you're feeling a bit more nervous about that or you don't quite know how to express yourself. Anyway, take this same idea, and if you can't do it physically where you are, try to find some kind of project. You find lots of them on YouTube or other websites, whether it's a blog or a video site. They can teach you how to make something. Then comment down below. Try to use some of the vocabulary that you're learning and go deeper with the topic that you're learning this month. There is so much to learn about this, and just find some part of it that you're interested in specifically, whether it could be making something like a physical thing, like a, a truck or a trailer or fixing an engine or it could be like a craft thing where you even make something out of paper like origami here in Japan. This is just folding pieces of paper into making interesting shapes. But whatever that thing is, I want you to do that. That's your homework for this month. So go out, find some particular thing. If you're in a physical area where you can do that, fantastic. If not, then try to find something online and do that as well and be sure to comment with people. That's it. I hope you have enjoyed it. Do go back and review everything as usual. And I look forward to seeing you next month where we've got more surprises and more interesting things coming then. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Click on the link in the upper right of this video or on the link in the description below this video to take our quick fluency quiz. It takes less than a minute and we'll use your answers to give you the best advice possible in a free, personalized guide you can use to speak better English today. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, share it with others you know who also want to improve, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. Click the bell icon for notifications after you subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.